Hello everyone, Blaze here, welcome to my September Anime Pickups Part 2. I've got a ton of stuff to get through, so uh, let's just uh, get straight into it, shall we? Uh, first up we have a Ghost, of Shell, Ghost in the Shell Arise. Uh, this is the first two movies that Funimation have put out. They just, as of like a week ago or something, put out uh, films 3 and 4. Uh, this is the dubbed release, obviously Funimation handled the imports uh, from Japan that had English subtitle support and they also, you know, they made those available um, for those that didn't want to literally import them. <laughs> so uh, yeah, they, they handled that and some, some people, they had nice packaging and all that but I, I wanted the dub uh, for Ghost in the Shadow Rise, I knew they'd end up you know, re-releasing it cheaper and with a dub so I figured I'd, I might as well wait for that. So yeah, this is the set. Uh, these are basically prequel films, somewhat, like, well, they're not necessarily, I don't like calling them prequels because Ghost in the Shell doesn't quite work like that, to my understanding, I haven't seen a lot of Ghost in the Shell, I need to see a lot more of it, I do like the franchise from what I've seen of it so far, but, yeah, there's not quite a, you know, there's not like a ladder, shall we say, like, this doesn't, this isn't the bottom rung of the ladder, it doesn't quite work like that, at least from my understanding, so yeah, but, but, these are basically four films based on the characters in their younger years, I, but yeah, I'm pretty sure this isn't a prequel to something like Standalone Complex, I might be wrong, but, anyway, but yeah, this is a really nice, uh, packaging wise, at least somewhat, I love the metallic effect on this, but I'm disappointed that this isn't a chipboard case, uh, doubly so because mine ended up coming through the post. I bought this brand new, but it's got a big crease here, it's crushed in the corner, it's got a bunch of creases and dents. You just, I could blame the, per the company I bought it from, and you know, it would have been nicer if they'd taken more care with the packaging. It was basically just sent in one of those, like... Sarah, I can't remember what they're called, but just a, a really crappy packaging, basically. Just might as well just been a bubble env envelope, like instead of a box, which is a shame. But yeah, at the same time, like, it would have been nice if Funimation had put it out in a chipboard box. I would have paid extra to have this in a chipboard box because this was a cheaper release than normal. But anyway, so yeah, it includes the first two of the Arise films. So got the first one, Ghost Pain, and yeah, there's four films. I believe they're not. Uh, feature length, I think they're only 50 minutes each, uh, I could be wrong, but to my understanding they're 50 minutes to an hour each. And each one comes with a booklet which is really cool, it gives you like a backstory on the characters and stuff and some interviews, really nice. So yeah, that's the first one, and we've got the second one, Ghost Whispers. But yeah, looking forward to watching these at some point. I need to watch a, a whole lot more Ghost in the Shell, like I said. I, I've seen some of it. I've seen, like, the, the well, I've seen the first film in Standalone Complex Season 1. That's pretty, that is all I've seen. So I, I, need, I have a lot more of it on my shelf. I still need to get, still need to get a Standalone Complex Season 2. But, yeah, I need to see a lot more of uh, Ghost in the Shell because it's a franchise I know that I like already, like, I, from what I've seen. Although... I wasn't quite a bigger fan of standalone complex as some people, but I still really liked it, and uh, certainly, you know, I'm interested in seeing more from that franchise, or this franchise, so, yeah, anyway, Ghost in the Shell Rise, let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so uh, next we have a the first two entries in a franchise which is actually quite large. Uh, this is a uh, Dirty Pair Part 1 and Part 2, these are the Lightbox re-releases that uh, Nozomi Entertainment or Right Stuff put out. Uh, they originally did put out like some more of their chipboard collector type fin box packaging, but uh, those are out of print and hard to get. And honestly, I actually prefer the look of these. I think they look really, really cool. Very 80s with their neon hot pink and like the bright neon yellow and stuff. I think it looks really cool. So yeah, Dirty Pair Part One. So basically, an 80s Sunrise series. I think it's 26 episodes for season one or 25 somewhere around there, but yeah, mid-80s series, action sci-fi series about these two girls that, uh, they basically work for the world government, shall we say, or something to that degree, and they go around solving problems, and that involves action hijinks and all the rest of it, and yeah, it just looks like a fun show, I've heard a lot of good things about it, been wanting to uh, check it out for a while, and it, yeah, it's 26 episodes. So yeah, there's 26 episodes for season one. I didn't show the disc, did I? So got the disc with the characters on it, and discs with the characters on season two. 
or part two. Anyway, yeah, so, yeah, there's actually a lot to this franchise. There's this original 26 episodes, and then there's a bunch of OVA seasons, or at least two. Uh, basically, what it ends up being, I think it's somewhere in the region of 50 to 54 episodes. That includes the TV series within that count. Uh, overall of the show, and then there's also a movie, or maybe one or two movies. I think it might just be one. But yeah, there's a there's a lot. And uh, Right Stuff have put it all out. Uh, they this is the first time Right Stuff are the only company to have ever put out the original series, the 26 episode series. And ADV did uh, put out the OVAs and movies and dubbed them, I believe. So uh, yeah, and then Right Stuff have since rescued those and re-released all those as well so they have the entire Dirty Pair franchise out and yeah I plan to uh, pick it all up because yeah <laughs> I've picked up the first part I plan to get the rest of it and yeah I like I like my 80s anime I'm trying to watch a lot more of it I haven't seen as much as I'd like so I've been uh, going on a journey recently watching 80s stuff and I plan to continue that quite often uh, yeah, so anyway, that's Dirty Pair. Let's move on to the next thing. Uh, okay, so next up we have uh, Karu or Kuraru. I can't really say this one actually. Uh, Phantom Memory. Uh, this is actually a save edition. Yeah, that's right, I bought a save edition. Um, the main reason I bought this save edition was this was £2.50. Buy it now with free postage on eBay, which probably meant the the guy who sold this to me must have only made about 50p on this sale. So, <laughs> after shipping and eBay fees and whatever. But yeah, I just when I saw it, I was like, you know what, for that price, I'm not going to say no, even if it is a save edition. It's not a show I was necessarily going to go out of my way to buy at any point. See, you know, I've heard about it, I've seen trailers for it, and old ADV trailers from volumes I used to have back in the day. And uh, yeah. So yeah, it wasn't a show I was going to go out of my way to get, but for that price, you know, if I spend that price on it and at some point end up watching it, then it was well worth the money. <laughs> so yeah, this is obviously the reversible cover for it. And on the inside, as you can see, it has the super amazing value edition, green banner nonsense from Funimation. <sighs> I just... Yeah, I know they come with reversible covers. My main problem with the save edition is that I don't like the fact they don't have any of the, you know, the Funimation logo, the DVD logo, and on the back it doesn't have the traditional... I don't know, all this stuff. I know this stuff is kind of annoying, like, we, you know, you want the artwork, but all this stuff here mean, proves that this is an official release, and that's the one issue I have with stuff like the reversible covers, is that even though I know it's official or whatever, it just doesn't look it. This looks like a bootleg because there's no, there's nothing on here stating that it isn't a bootleg. You know that's always been my problem with them. But hey, for two pound fifty, whatever. It's just me being picky with all that stuff. But anyway, yeah. So Kari the Phantom Memory. I don't know much about it at all. Sci-fi series. Guy has a pretty cool sword on the front cover. I don't know. Anyway, if you guys have seen it, tell me what you think of it, because I literally, I know next to nothing about this series, I haven't heard particularly good things. One of the only things I know about this series, I think it's one of the ones that ADV paid a huge amount of money for back in the day, and it was like, one of, this is, this show was like one of the reasons ADV ended up going under in the, in the long term, because they just paid way too money, way too much money for certain licenses that were never going to pay back, and this was one of the big offenders of that. Because this one, this one cost them almost a million dollars to license. So anyway, yeah, that's Kari Phantom Memory. Okay, so next up we have a new Akimaguri Orange Road Summer's Beginning. This is a mid-90s OVA that takes place after the series and after the uh, the movie. And <laughs> I honestly don't know how to feel about this. I haven't watched it, but I know the plot, and the plot just sounds ridiculous. Like, it basically resets the show somewhat. Um, I'm not going to spoil the end of Kimiguri Orange Road, but just to put it out there, Kimiguri Orange Road is a love triangle series, right? So, basically... New Kimiguri Orange Road puts the, the idea out there that after that love triangle has kind of been settled, shall we say, unsurprisingly for a show with that concept, um, <laughs> this show takes place, or this OVA, I think it's an OVA, it might be a movie, one or the other, but it, it takes place uh, three years 
or something like that. A few years later, basically the main guy has apparently been in a road accident. He wakes up with a from a coma with no memory or his or his like he's got amnesia and he's you know his mind is back in like the middle of the TV series era. Basically, after he's made his decision. He can't remember what his decision he made, so it's kind of like love gets a second chance and the whole love triangle thing just heats up again and what the fuck, like, <laughs> it's such a weird idea to me, it's like, are we going to completely just put the reset on this for a, a random OVA, which I would be amazed if this is canon in the, I don't know if, I think Imaguri Orange Road is based on the manga, I'm actually not certain of that, I would imagine it probably is, but I actually don't know. But assuming it is, I can't imagine that the manga had anything like this in it. But again, I could be wrong. I don't know, I haven't put in my research. But yeah, this is such a weird thing, but I had to pick it up. Because um, I you know, I watched Kimiguri on your road, and I thought it was okay for what it was. Like a stupid 80s, slightly fantasy, supernatural, love triangle story. It was fine, and the movie was a bit brutal in places, <laughs> but it was fine. I haven't watched the OVAs yet. Um, but those are like side stories for the TV series and not actually uh, a sequel to the television series. But anyway, yeah, this is a sequel apparently and it sounds ridiculous and I will be watching it at some point. This is dubbed, I think, because it's done by ADV. I might, yeah, bilingual English and Japanese. So this is the only entry in the Kimiguri Orange Road series that is dubbed because everything else, Kimiguri Orange Road, was put out by um, Animago. Uh, the TV series, the OVAs, and the movie, and none of those were dubbed, I don't think. Maybe the movie was dubbed. I'm pretty sure it wasn't, though. But anyway, yeah, Kimigori Orange Road, uh, Summer's Beginning, the crazy-ass OVA for this <laughs> final uh, crazy OVA entry to the franchise. So, yeah, let's move on. Right, uh, next up we have Future GPX Cyber Formula. Uh, this is a early 90s series, I think it ran for about 38 episodes and was... I find it crazy this was ever put out officially in English because it's basically about future Formula 1 to some extent, like, yeah, pretty much. It's kind of the idea of it. It's subtitle only. It doesn't seem like the sort of thing that would sell in America. Like, I know America likes IndyCar and NASCAR, but Formula 1 has never been a big thing in America, really. Like, it had its moments, but, yeah. But anyway, for me personally, Formula 1 is incredibly important to me. I don't think I've ever talked about it, because I haven't really ever had a reason to. But Formula 1 is hugely a big... It's a huge part of my life. I watch Formula 1 religiously. Like, I've seen every race... Um, live, as it was airing on television since 2000 and two and I watched it you know countless other races before then and the only time I've ever missed a race live on television was when I actually went to Silverstone the British Grand Prix live myself uh, back in 2004 but yeah I've been religiously into Formula One so yeah I've been interested in this series for ages and it's just been really hard to find it because uh, when by the time I knew this release even existed it has obviously long gone out of print and it was going for quite crazy money and there's also a weird thing about it, the way it was released, Bandai initially put out a single box set, the first half, and then when that didn't sell very well, they put out another box set that included both parts, so there isn't, you can't buy part two on its own, it doesn't exist. It was a weird decision, I, I just don't understand why they would do that in that way but that's that's how it came about so yeah you can buy this on its own or you can buy these together you cannot get part two on its own as far as I'm aware I'm pretty sure that's right but uh, yeah it's it's quite expensive but and I didn't want to spend too much money on it and I ended up I mean I was interested in it like I said but I just wasn't I don't know I wasn't willing to spend a huge amount of money on it and uh, as a result when I saw one going cheap uh, I picked it up, but uh, as a result of going, it got being cheap, and I knew this beforehand when I bought it from the pictures in the auction or whatever. It's not in the greatest of condition, but yeah. Anyway, so like the uh, it doesn't include the slip the slip cover that held these together as one box set, um, and it's all wrinkled. There's a stain up here, 
at the top, but yeah, it's all wrinkled. The spine is slightly sl sun bleached, not to any extreme amount, but it is slightly, and the whole thing just looks tired and like it's you know all this wrinkling is probably down to moisture yeah it just hasn't been kept in the greatest of condition unfortunately <laughs> but uh yeah i have it now and that's really all that matters like the discs are fine as far as i'm aware so yeah this is <laughs> future gpx side performer i don't really know what else to say about it. 38 episode series about kid that drives in some futuristic version of formula one i think i'll like it like almost certain I will like it just because I like racing and uh, if it's yeah you know, I really like other sh some of the other anime I've watched about racing cars which I, if I actually think about it for more than five seconds I think is just initial D but I really liked initial D a lot uh, despite some of the issues that show has is that when it was all about the racing and nothing nothing but that was when it was at its best it was when it went into other avenues that it really sucked but anyway yeah that's that's uh, this. I've already said the title three or four times now, so yeah, that's the Cyber Performer GPX. Let's uh, move on. Again, I keep saying move on. Let's go to the next thing. <laughs> okay, so next up, I picked up part two, collection two, the final collection of Captain Earth on Blu ray from Sentai Filmworks. Obviously, to go with part one. Um, as I've mentioned before a few times, uh, I was really. Uh, <laughs> Highly anticipating Captain Earth, it's a Bones Mecha series, as I've said before, I love the Bones Mecha stuff, like, when Bones do the genre Mecha, the studio Bones, they do it really well, at least that used to be the case, I've now slowly come to the realisation that they did it well three times in a row, and then the last three haven't been that great, which is sad to me, but, you know, they did Razaphon, Elreka 7 and Zand Lost Memories. Zand Lost Memories isn't technically mecha, but it feels so close to that genre. I have always ch uh, chosen to uh, put it on the same pedestal as the other two as being a Bones mecha series because it's very similar. Uh, but from there on, they did Star Driver, which I've watched and I liked, but had its issues. Erica 7 AO, which I liked, but had serious issues as a sequel to Erica 7. And then Captain Earth, which I haven't watched yet, well I haven't watched all of it, I watched half of it, was okay with it, but I wanted to restart, I had to, I started watching while it was airing, stopped, went back to it from where I was, watched another five or so episodes, and I thought, ah, I'm going to wait until it comes out, because I'm hoping it will get dubbed, it didn't get dubbed, unfortunately, these are sub only, but I was hoping it was going to get dubbed, so I th thought I'd stop, and then just rewatch the whole thing dubbed when it came out, but I will start from the beginning, when I eventually get round to watching Captain Earth, but yeah, people weren't too into Captain Earth, it kind of wasn't that great apparently, which is a shame, it certainly had all the elements when I watched the first five or so episodes of what I love about this uh, franchise, like this style of show that Bones do, it had like the colourful uh, uh, space action, or at least the mecha action, it's not always in space, in fact, it rarely is. <laughs> um, you know, and it had like the really awesome mecha designs that I tend to like, and just the color palette of the show in general, the style of the show, just everything, just it felt right. But yeah, I don't know. People aren't really into it. Hoping I, I hopefully I'll get enough out of it to enjoy it. That's my real hope that I'll at least like it as much as say something like Elrica Seven AO which I know a lot of people hate, <laughs> but I didn't hate that show, I just wasn't that into it. But anyway, yeah, so I picked up part two of Captain Earth, it came on a single disc. One of those weird cases where KG Sentai Filmworks, they're just like, no, we're just going to put this out on a single disc, because it's, you know, it's 11 episodes, so why not? But if it's 12 episodes, it has to be on two, it's, it's weird sometimes, but then it doesn't always have to be on two, sometimes it will be just on one, and they seem to be random with that occasionally, which is weird, but anyway... Captain Earth, I will get round to it eventually and I will either be very disappointed or at least okay with it. I'm hoping for the latter, obviously. So yeah, that's Captain Earth. One more thing and then we're finally done with this uh, September pickups video. So yeah. Okay, so finally we got Pat Labour 2, the movie. Uh, the second of the Pat Labour films, obviously. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I've watched this. And I was conf 
confused with it. I don't really know how I feel about Pat Labour 2. I liked it and I didn't like it. It's often heralded as the best part of Pat Labour, but for me, it I can agree with that in one aspect. It is the best executed entry in Pat Labour. The animation is outstanding, the way the story unfolds is pretty amazing, it's really well done. But, it's not Pat Labour. It's just not. It doesn't. It doesn't feel that way. Like the, it doesn't concentrate on Noah, like who's pretty much the you know the poster girl of Pat Labour. She's the main character. It's not about her um, at all. <laughs> and when I actually looked into this more, because I was really confused, it just didn't feel like a Pat Labour entry at all. It's very different in tone. Like there's no light-heartedness about it at all. It has like some soft, warm moments every now and then, but it doesn't have any of the comedy hijinks and just any of the stuff that's in all the rest of the Pat Labour stuff that I've seen. And so yeah, when I looked into it further, it turns out that Mamori Yoshi, who is the director of it, obviously did Coast in the Shell, and he did the previous Pat Labour movie and the original Early Days OVA, which is the first Pat Labour entry, which is this one. <laughs> so yeah, uh, he did it, and it turns out that he wanted to make a different film, but when he went to you know the studio, whoever funds it, uh, early production IG or something, I can't remember. Some right, I, I I don't know. I'm not going to pretend I know. Um, but yeah, he went to the studio, asked for the money to make said film that he had in mind, and they turned around and said, well. We don't mind you making a film, but we don't want you to make it about this because we're not sure we're going to get a return on that. Pat Labour is still pretty huge. If you make it a Pat Labour movie, we'll let you make the film. So that's basically what happened. It's It was a script or an idea, like a half... I don't imagine the script was fully done and they just pasted in Pat Labour characters to say the lines or anything like that. But I feel like it was certainly like... It's an idea that didn't really involve Pat Labour whatsoever. And then eventually it had to you know become pat labor and as a result as a you know i i i hasten to say as a pat labor fan because i i'm you know i'm a very early into my fandom like i've watched pretty much all of it now that i only need to see that final film but at the same time i haven't seen well i haven't been watching pat labor for years i've only been watching it for like the last i don't know just over a year or something so but I really enjoyed it, and I feel like the it uh, the best comparison that I made the, the what I loved about Pat Labor the most is on this. This is actually my favorite part of Pat Labor, past the first four episodes of the OVA. So there's twelve episodes of the OVA, which is just slight. Sli uh, can't even say it. Slice of life stuff involving Noah and the rest of the. Um, Oh god, I can't believe I'm forgetting, you know, the second unit or whatever. And it's just, yeah, slice of life stuff with all the characters, and fun comedy hijink stuff, good action, and it's great. I loved it. I just loved it. I, just, I watched it, and, you know, I was laughing. I just felt, it was like wrapping yourself in a nice warm blanket or whatever. It was just great. I loved it a lot. That's what Pat Labour is to me, when Pat Labour is at its best. And this was really good. In execution, as I said, and everything, like the story is cool, it's a really interesting mystery, and everything, but it's not Pat Labour, like it feels like something more akin to Ghost in a Shell, or even though this isn't Oshi, at least I don't believe, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not Oshi, but uh, something like Jinro, the Wolf Brigade, something like that, it's much darker in tone, a lot, lot darker in tone, much more serious, it's a political thriller. And while the Pat Labour universe is certainly open to being a political thriller, like totally, like it fits, but it doesn't, it doesn't reflect uh, in the same way that the re on the rest of the franchise. So yeah, I was kind of lukewarm on it <laughs> in that aspect. But um, I'm not sure if I actually showed you the packaging or whatever. But um, this includes the Bandai visual dub. Uh, this has actually been dubbed twice. Um, it was originally dubbed by Manga Entertainment, and when their license expired, Bandai Visual put out those collector's editions, which I actually would like to get now. They're still relatively easy to find for not too much money. I'd like to get those, because uh, they come with a crap ton of extras, but they redubbed them for some reason, and the redub is really 
boring. It doesn't. It doesn't help the movie at all because the movie's very, like I said, political thriller. It's very dialogue heavy, and when the dialogue is spoken in such a dry and unenthusiastic tone, like <laughs> like it is for the Bandai visual dub, I just I couldn't I couldn't stick with it. I ended up watching. I think I st I stuck with it for like twenty minutes. So I was like, oh, this is almost putting me to sleep. You know, even though the story is interesting, so I, I ended up watching the rest of it subtitled. Uh, but because of that, I actually went out of my way to uh, buy the manga versions of the first two films, which uh, the manga dubs are kind of cool. And I watched the uh, dub for the second film, so I rewatched the film with the manga manga dub this time, and I thought it was a much better dub. As often, that is almost a universal opinion that, strangely enough, manga entertainment. Uh, did produce a really good dub. Uh, it wasn't one of their swearing, trying too hard, cheesy dubs, which I often love. But yeah, it, it was actually a proper, well done dub. And yeah, it made the film better. But again, still not Pat Labour as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, that's my opinion. But as far as I don't actually like this packaging very much, it kind of looks very generic. But it does have extras, which uh, this. This unfortunately, this Made in Japan version doesn't have like the Bandai Visual release that was in those collector's editions had like uh, lots of behind the scenes documentaries and stuff like that. Uh, this has some of that stuff, but it doesn't have all of it. So I might end up getting the um, the Bandai Visual releases, like I said, as well as a companion. And uh, yeah, as far as the discs, these manga discs, I might end up buying a double Blu-ray case and just putting the manga disc inside here to save space on the shelf. But anyway, whatever. So yeah, um, that actually brings my Pat Labor collection almost to completion. Like I said, if I just quickly off camera do that. So yeah, uh, we've got the early days OVA, the first movie, the second movie. I'm not too keen on the fact they use the movie logos on the spines because it means even though the rest of it all has that same logo, the movies don't, which is kind of annoying. But anyway, so yeah, we got uh, the original OVA, the movie, the movie, and then we'll have the third movie there. That's the movie timeline, and then we've got the TV timeline, which includes the four volumes that hold the 47 episode TV series, and then we've got the OVA series at the end. So yeah, come Christmas, I'll have all the Pat Labor on Blu-ray, thanks to Made in Japan, who, yeah, really awesome stuff. So yeah, that is the end of this ridiculously long pickups video. Um, thanks for watching. I hope I was interesting and enough talking about some of this stuff. I didn't really know what to say about some of this stuff, honestly, because I've had it in my collection for so long. I hadn't watched it yet. And I was kind of like, well, I don't really know what to say about this stuff other than what it is. But hopefully I wasn't too boring. <laughs> um, um, October pickups will be coming sooner rather than later because I want to you know, try and catch up. I didn't have too much for November, so that should be just a one episode thing uh, yeah and I got, I'm going to be doing some unboxings and other things at some point but at the moment I'm just wasting your time so <laughs> I'll be going now uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon